So let's outline the five spiritual challenges of the hour. So we can know how to take cover against these arrows. Matthew 24 verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound. That talks about outbreak of sin. The kind the world never knew before. Where men have a vision to become a woman. <laughs> and where technology is helping them to become one. Where a man begins to carry breasts like a woman. They were not known before. They are new incursions of iniquity shall abound. We are playing games. It's now seen as being smart. We are stealing as being defined. Iniquity shall abound. New faces of sin. New models. <laughs> when sin will be redefined, you can't sin. Your spirit is born again. It can't be unborn again. Your spirit cannot say, sir. <laughs> he says, able to destroy the body in hell. It's not the spirit. It's the body. Because iniquity shall abound. There are preachers who are preaching it to. Many. Man, they don't care about heaven. Iniquity shall abound. Your sins of the past are written off. Sins of the present are written off. Sins of the future are written off. Somebody said one time, and I heard that anytime you open your Bible and something condemns you, that's not the Lord speaking to you. Sir, so I had it by myself. No, they told me. I had it by myself. When you read your Bible and anything they seem to condemn what you are doing, that's not the Bible. That's how, how depraved sin had become in church. It's time to take cover against the assault of iniquity. So your labor of many years will not be wasted in hell. And the hell of it begins from here. You know, people say, what a hell? Hell begins from here. It's not a slang. It's the Bible. What a hell. <laughs> you tell some people you are going to hell, you say, I'm already in hell. And he's telling the truth. <laughs> Life without Jesus is hell on earth. Hell on earth. Hell on earth. Iniquity shall abound. That someone just wake up and say, God told him to do something on Biblical. And it's God. Which God? Is he God of the Bible or another God? Some will say, the Holy Ghost told me. You are playing with death. He kills people. Holy Ghost kills people. They lied against him and they died. You have got to talk about Say, I perceive and save your life. <laughs> I think I save your life. You are permitted to think. Don't, don't lie. 
Holy Ghost. He doesn't talk with people. If it's Jesus, is full of mercy. Holy Ghost. Who shall abide in the day of his coming? Fire! I sat down here today and the Lord rebuked me. And I told you, I said, I had a rebuke from the Lord today. You better settle down. If you don't wait to against iniquity, it will subdue you, cover you, and God forbid, you will not be messed up. Yeah. Iniquity shall abound, will expand, will be enlarged. If possible, the very elect shall be deceived. Number two challenge, spiritual challenge, is that the love of many shall wax cold. How? They see unbelievers flourishing through games and gimmicks. What is the profit that we are running after God? He's just showing them the glitters. Not the doom underneath. The glitters. Not all the glitters. It's gold. Can I confess to you, I've never seen one unbeliever to envy in my life. One unbeliever to envy. It, it, it's going to be mysterious madness for a living man to envy a dead man. No. What? What does he carry? Does he have the hope of eternal life that dwells in you? The peace you enjoy for free? The joy that ever, is ever flowing? I've been carrying my smiles for 53 years. There's nobody else outside Christ can say that. Smiles? You can't talk to me on phone and not laugh under any condition. That's the joy of salvation. You can't buy the market. That the peace that passes all knowledge. Can't define it. And that's God's finger on your life. That's creating and opening doors, impossible doors to you. When I had nothing in the physical, I had no unbeliever to envy. And you are quoting sinners as preachers. Are you hearing? Quoting sinners. It's a land that is only fig tree. Fig tree, not vine. You see what they are going through and see how God has exempted you. The love of many shall was cold. And that implies you must keep your love on fire. Keep your love on fire. Like said in the morning, one of those teachings, the love of God entitles to wear God's presence. And by the time we get to the social challenges, you will know that it's beyond having things. It's possessing God that guarantees your dominion in this end time. Do your best to get all of the teachings at Shiloh. There will be lifelines for your escape from hard times. The love of many shall was cold. David, the psalmist was going cold at a time. 
All that say there's no God, see how they are flourishing. He says, stop that. You soon look for them. Diligently, I shall not find them. There's nothing to look up to there. Look unto me. Number three. The faith of many shall fail. The faith of men. Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. The faith of many shall fail. Shall he find faith on the earth? Luke 22 verse 31. Jesus said to Peter, I pray for you that thy faith faileth not. That thy faith faileth not. That thy faith faileth not. So faith can fail. Weak faith can stand the horrors of the hour. Little faith can ride the storms of the day. <laughs> Why are you so fearful? Oh, you have little faith. Little faith can ride the storms of the day. Invest in building your faith. Invest. Don't wish. Work at building your faith. Work at building your faith. Work at building your faith. Our faith has unlimited capacity for growth. He said, Thy faith groweth exceedingly. It has unlimited capacity for growth. Invest in building your faith from no faith to little faith. Little faith to strong faith. Strong faith to supernatural faith. Invest in building your faith. At the time I went to a minister's conference here and brought my diaries. Good news, they've been turned into books. Amen. Amen. Volume 1 and 2 will be declared the only this event. There are going to be up to 20 volumes. 500 pages. Of my time in his presence and my writing fingers. No assumptions. I wrote it by my hand so it can't crash. Handwritten. Paper can't crash. Amen. Paper can I write every day, every day. Little faith can't ride this storm. You will play games in the process. You play games in the process. Even we preachers, you can preach yourself dry. That there's nothing more to say but to make some noise. Popular saying in those early days of Kenneth Higgins' uh, powerful ministry. Build your faith and stop your doubt. Build your faith. Lay your doubt to rest. There are things God is telling you to do that you don't have the faith capacity to step out. You don't have it, not that you don't want to, but uh, <laughs> you don't have it. Nobody can lay faith on you. No. The spirit of faith is all about grace to build your faith and put it to work. Even the spirit of faith requires the world to stay alive. It can be grieved. It can be quenched. By the time you start talking contrary to faith, you are grieving it. If you don't stop, you kill it. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 
1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith. Their faith can't stand these storms. Faith in good times is not a problem. Little faith can handle that. Disciples are on the sea. They will have a nice time. When the storm came, they said, Master, we perish. We don't have capacity for this one. <laughs> Jesus said, where is your faith, my friend? Their faith couldn't stand this storm. Don't wait for faith to grow. Grow your faith. Number four, many deceivers and false teachers shall arise. It's one of the challenges of the end time and in the hour that we live. Many deceivers and false teachers will rise. Matthew 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. They come in their numbers. Verse 2 of it. Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with fain words make merchandise of you. A number of ministers around the world are merely gospel merchants. If you have this crowd of people and they give just $5 each, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And then you come to the church, you start prophesying to secure the five dollars per person. <laughs> if you want to be hit instantly, make it ten. <laughs> you want God's hand upon your life on the spot like you see on my life? My God, make it twenty. You want to ride the storms of life without any stress? A hundred dollars. <laughs> and they know, inside they are knowing. <laughs> that is all games. They know within they are knowing. There is falsehood. Because they are not in the covenant. So the only way to get through is to take advantage of people. We don't have them in this family. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. We believe in the dignity of the gospel. The day I will take advantage of any man for Christ's sake who made me on the earth. Grace has helped me to this point. I can't sell off at this point. That I will come to you and paint a picture to assess your pocket. No. One of my friends was taking an offering here years ago. And I said, shh. Very great friend has 
a lot of insight in the word of God. But no, no, you don't need money to assess my blessings. God told me this morning, I'm not asking you to give because I'm in need. I'm never in need. I'm asking you to give so I can meet your needs. Come on. <laughs> will God ever be in need? If I were in need, will I call you? Are you in my, the class that I will consult? That, hey, David, I have a need. I said, what about? Ten nations are in trouble. I need to sort them out. Can you help out? I said, help you. <laughs> no. Uh, you and I are not in the class that God will require to consult. If you ever had a problem. The thousand rounds of putting thousand is their mind. He said, I'm not asking you to give because I'm in need. I'm asking you to give for me to meet all your needs. I'm going to my riches in glory. So you are not giving to me my need. People want them to believe they are giving to meet God's need. I'm a, it's an insult. It's an insult on your God. It's an insult on your God that God needs me to be God. Abba. So who will make me to be me? God will never need any of us to be God. We need them to be what grace has programmed us to be in him. So when you give, don't give as meeting God's need. No. He said, which house are you going to be for me? That you're now bragging. Which house will you be for? All these are my man. My hand has made. Oh, my hand has made. Oh, to this man will I look, man that has a contrite spirit, who trembles at my word. There is nothing you give to God to cajole him. Nothing, sir. Nothing. So relax. Relax yourself. You know, today people say, I bind to the anointing. Don't you read chapter 8 of us of the apostles? Your money perish with you. They don't buy with money. Somebody's, somebody's free tonight because uh, if you don't build yourself, the enemy is not the problem. It's our own carelessness that's taking advantage of. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When the receivers will rise, they bring their numbers. Titus chapter 1 and verse 10. There are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially day of circumcision. It's not new. First Timothy again, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Now the Spirit has spread that in the later days some shall depart from the faith, giving it to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that have no basis in scriptures. Speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their consciences seared with a hot iron. Dead consciences. Finally, number five, many shall be offended and give up on God in this hour. If God would do anything, he should have done it by now. I mean, by now he should have done it. I, I understand by now he should have done it. The problem is that they don't understand what you're going through. Papa just say, give thanks, give thanks. Like, can I give thanks on this kind of thing? I can't give thanks. Hmm? I think people should be talking to Papa himself to know that we are going through something. He can't be telling us to give thanks. Give thanks for what? I'm not giving thanks. <laughs> Let God do his worst. I preached a message in the early days of the ministry. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. A woman that was barren got her miracles from there. Whoever contended with God and has prospered. You give up on God, you have given up on your life. Who will help you if God does not help you? A time comes when the help of man will fail. That king said, if God does not help you, where will I help you from? Where will I help you from? If God does not help you, where will I help you from? I 
am as much a need as you. I came out of my house. There's no food to eat in my house. And they think I'm king. So I had to go out. If God does not help you, where will I help you from? Many shall be offended in God. Can I see what makes me fear? Luke 9, 17, verse 1. He said, It is impossible, but out of offenses we come. But woe unto them by whom they come. Offenses will come. Things to offend you. To be offended in God is to sign off for failure. You become helpless in the journey of life. If God turns his back on a man, that's the end of him. I'm not giving up, I'm not done. I'm not giving up, I'm not done. My God will do it again, just like before. I'm not giving up, I'm not done. In case you are the verge of giving up, you are not giving up on God, you are giving up on life. Because whether you give up or you're giving, God is still God. <laughs> whether you disappear or appear, God is still God. There's nothing you and I do that will ever affect God or tamper with his status. Refuse to be offended in God. And you know what will keep you going? The joy of eternity that's ahead of you. Jesus was the joy that was set before him and the cross, despised the shame, and it's now set that our majesty on high. Just let that eternal goal be what controls your attitude. Amen. <laughs> All of one is bright, I must get there. My future is bright, I must get there. My future is bright, I must get there. Heaven is colorful, sir. There's always what to endure before you arrive at what to enjoy. There's always what to endure before you arrive at what to enjoy. There's always what to endure before you get to the realm of what to enjoy. There is always what to endure. There is always what to endure. There is always what to endure before you arrive at what to enjoy. Refuse to be offended in God. It will keep opening new chapters to your life. Refuse to be offended in God. When my wife came under that grievous attack of death, I never said once, you know, Jesus, you know, I'm serving you. You know, God, I'm your servant. And I pray for the sick and they are here. Hey. What an expert you are. <laughs> it never came out of my mouth once and not in my heart once. If God does not help you, where will I help you from? It's the beginning of offenses. God, you ought to have done this by now. Who told you? He told me sometimes. He said, hey, listen. Your times are in my hand. My times are not in your hand. <laughs> Psalm 31 verse 15. <laughs> he said, my times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies. Our times are in his hand. His time is not in our hand. He makes all things beautiful in his time. In his time. In his time. Stop gasping. If you don't want to lose your peace, keep pace with God. Keep pace with God. To secure your peace in life. Keep pace with God. Keep pace with God. We were once under a grass cathedral, but before then we were in the open air. Open air service had to start at 5.30 in the morning to beat the sun. 
was that anointing come the same meet us here. <laughs> Outside, open here, open here in a city, not in a village. And then someday we built a grass cathedral in one week. Hmm? We spent 23,000 to build that heavy cathedral. And you hear me say, this is the largest grass cathedral in the world. If you see anyone bigger than this, let me know. <laughs> what a joy. Instead of being angry, this is the largest. Have you ever seen a cathedral like that? Grass cathedral? <laughs> no, you can't find it. Amen. Now, are we still under the grass now? We were there under the wind conditions, you know, because the grass has perforations. So the air comes in, natural air, very healthy. <laughs> we are jumping and dancing in that place. Some of us are here right now. One of us came up some two Sundays ago. He said, I'm 40 years in this church today. He was among the first members of this church in Kaduna. So they saw it. Refused to be offended in God. So you don't get stranded in life. Say, help me, Jesus. If I don't see anything, I can see eternity waiting for me. That's more than enough. Give the Lord a big hand of praise.